wife's co-worker makes shocking final confession that ends our marriage. Now let's get into this story and see what it's all about. He starts off and says, I'm writing here as I'd like to get your opinion on my situation. Let's start with a bit about my life. I'm 35, married for over 8 years to my 32-year-old wife, and we've been together for 10 years. I've always thought our marriage was super great, like it couldn't get any better. But hold on, there's a twist coming your way. You see, I thought everything was just perfect. In our relationship, all happy and fulfilling. But it seems there might be something more to this story that I hadn't quite realized yet. There might be a big secret hiding and we're about to discover it soon enough. It might not have been as fulfilling for her though. He continues, we enjoyed being together a lot. Our physical connection was awesome and we were like each other's closest buddy. I believed in my wife with everything I had just like she believed in me. But here's the thing, I have a bit of doubt because in today's world, I'm not sure if you can completely trust anyone. Notice how I'm describing everything in the past tense. You'll see why later, by choice. We hadn't started a family yet because we wanted to enjoy our lives a while and to save up for a down payment on a nice home. We bought the house last year and this year we planned to start our family. However, that's not going to happen now. I have a good job and earn a good income while my wife works as an elementary school teacher. She is very good at her job and her students and their parents love her. Keep in mind everything I've told you thus far when I tell you what happened next. This past Tuesday, I got a call from a woman who asked that I call her right away as she had important information to share with me. I didn't recognize the name and thought it was a scam of sorts, so I deleted the message. Now normally when I get these calls, I also block the number but forgot to do so this time. Later in the day, I got another call from the same number and let it go to voicemail. In the message, the woman explained she was the spouse of a former co-worker. My wife had passed away recently. Now here's another tale about cheating at work. She mentioned having crucial information and urged me to call her immediately. I didn't recognize the names mentioned, but I guess she might be trying to inform my wife about someone's passing. I closed the door to my office and called her from my personal cell phone. She answered right away and didn't waste any time telling me what she had to say. She first explained who she was and then went on to tell me her husband had recently passed away from the big sea after battling it for over a year. I offered her my sympathies, wrote down his name, and said I would advise my wife of his passing. She cut me off and said that's not why she called. She then explained that while under hospice care and near the end of his earthly time, now listen to this. Her husband confessed that he had a three-year affair with my wife from mid-2016 through the summer of 2019. When I heard this, it felt like a surge of cortisol raced through me, making my heart race. I was left speechless, utterly shocked by what she said. After collecting myself, I tried to find words, but it was tough. I wondered if maybe he was hallucinating due to medication. She assured me with certainty, mentioning she discovered numerous messages between them on his laptop. Her search also unveiled a disturbing video, capturing their final meeting on August 17, 2018. As she spoke, I just kept telling her I didn't believe it. I asked her to send me proof and gave her my personal email account. She proceeded to copy and send me several of the most damning messages between them, but the video was too large to be sent through mail or via text. I asked her if she had a jump drive. She didn't, so she ran out and bought one. When she got back, she called me, and I led her through the process to copy the video to the drive. The next morning, she overnighted the drive to my office, and I got it Thursday morning. I brought my personal laptop with me to the office that day for the sole purpose of watching the video. I put the thumb drive in and hit play and couldn't believe my eyes. There was my wife and this gangly-looking guy I'd never seen before doing things I can't describe here. I'll just say it was horrifying. Some of the things they did were not just disgusting. They were unsanitary. Now I wonder what they were doing in the 28.5 minute video. As soon as I pressed play, they were loud, laughing, and seemingly having a great time. It made me feel sick inside. I couldn't help but cry and feel queasy at first. But as I continued, watching, my sadness turned into intense anger and rage. It was like I wanted to lash out or break something or someone. Luckily, my wife wasn't with me when I watched it because I'm not sure how I would have reacted if she was there. It's now 8.11pm on Thursday evening and I've been typing out this post for the last hour and a half. I called my wife earlier this afternoon and told her I was going out for dinner with clients. I occasionally have to do this for work, so she bought my story. As far as what I'm going to do, I'm not totally sure. What do you mean you're not totally sure? He says, but I'm strongly leaning towards divorce. There's no way I could force myself to stay with her and I'll never be able to forgive her. In fact, after what I saw her doing, I really don't want to get near her again without wearing PPE. 
Now PPE stands for Personal Protection Equipment. So what did this woman do with this guy? I'm not kidding about that either, he says. Also, the fact that the video is four years old doesn't matter. She cheated on me and I cannot accept that. Now, here's where I'd like your opinion. Should I confront her with the evidence and give her a chance to explain? Or should I just go straight to an attorney and serve her divorce papers? I haven't informed anyone else about this yet, as frankly, I'm too ashamed. That's why I've come here to discuss this anonymously and get your feedback. I promise to read all comments and that's the end of his original post. And now we're going to take a look at a few of the responses he got from the community. If you're liking what you've heard so far, make sure you hit that like button that will help get this video seen by people all over the world. Let's check out some responses. The first one is from a woman. She suggests that since it happened over four years ago and you've said your marriage was super good, it might be a good idea to sit down and talk with your wife. Give her a chance to explain what you found. According to her, it seems like your wife might have confessed on her own ended the affair, and made a real effort to make things right in your marriage which she thinks speaks highly of her. We all make stupid mistakes when we're young. Remember, forgiveness is a sign of true strength. Well, to me, it sounds like this woman who responded, she may have done something like this when she was younger. Next, we have a response from a guy. He says, I'm torn on this one. She cheated on you, which is awful. But it was four years ago, and you said in your description you had a great marriage outside of this discovery. Well, this is a pretty big discovery, dude, judging how things are in the world today. I talked to her and tried to work through things. I'd hate to see you give up on a great marriage and then regret it after you find out there's no one better out there. This guy sounds like someone who doesn't have a lot of options when it comes to women, and he would hold on to any woman that would have him. That's what this guy sounds like. Next there's a response from a woman. She says, cheating for me is an unforgivable act. I love my first husband with all my heart, and we had two beautiful children together, but one day he came home from a business trip and told me he had cheated on me. I threw him out the same day and filed for divorce. That was 28 years ago, and I've since remarried and had three additional children, while he has never fully recovered. Well what I say to this is good for you, lady, because you did the right thing. You took immediate action and you moved on. And look where you are today versus your cheating ex-husband. Lastly, there's another response from the guy. He's quite firm, suggesting to give her a chance to explain. But he's skeptical about what there is to explain. He points out the video evidence showing her doing things that are described as really bad with another guy. He seems to believe that all you'll get are excuses, apologies, and fake tears without any real explanation for her actions. Save yourself the aggravation and just tell her you're divorcing her for infidelity, and tell her to move out of your house. That's it. Don't overthink things. Well, I think this guy nailed it. I mean, this is a perfect response he gave him and all the advice here that he gave is spot on. Now we've got a series of updates where he's going to talk about what's been going on since his original post. The first one came three days later. He says, I just wanted to give a quick update on where things stand after grabbing some dinner on Thursday evening. I finally went home and acted normal with my wife. Thankfully, I was able to keep my distance from her and she didn't attempt to initiate closeness. On Friday, I took the day off and met with a divorce attorney. After doing a lot of digging online, I gathered all the proof, including the video, and showed it to my attorney. She clarified that although my wife clearly broke the marriage vows, it wouldn't change the outcome of the case. I was puzzled and asked why. Here's the kicker. She explained that our state operates on a no-fault divorce basis. This basically means that either person can end the marriage at any time without putting blame on anyone. No questions asked. So last week's story, we had a guy who was in an ad-fault state and that worked to his favor. Now this week, we've got a guy who's in a no-fault state, which you're going to see, is going to be to his detriment. I asked her, how is that possible? And she told me it's the law. She said, we can all thank Ronald Reagan for starting this back in the late 60 seconds when he was governor of California. She said he was the first governor in the nation to sign this into law. And since then, a number of states have followed suit. I was surprised to learn this, as I always thought he was one of our best presidents. Now, I'm not so sure that doesn't change anything, though, as I'm still going forward with the divorce. It just means that I'll come out of this ordeal a lot poorer. The thing I'm still wrestling with is whether to confront her or just wait to have her serve. I want to wait, but I don't think I can hold out much longer. Being around her these past two evenings has been tough, and I'm dreading seeing her tonight. It's Saturday morning, and I'm jotting this down while I'm sitting outside a coffee shop near my house. I told my wife that I needed to respond to some work emails and plan to do it here, which is something I occasionally do. Thankfully, she didn't ask to come with me, but she's already texted me a couple of times asking when I was coming home. I think she may sense something is up with me. 
Well, she probably does because women are very perceptive that way. That's all I've got to report for now. Thanks for all the advice and recommendations. It's been comforting reading all your stories and hearing what you have to say. And that's the end of his first update. But then he's got another update that came 8 days later. He says, Greetings. I've come back to give a quick update on my situation. It's Sunday morning and I'm again sitting outside a coffee shop typing a post. But this time I'm 20 miles away from my home. I ended up snapping a week ago and confronting my wife about her affair. I did it last Saturday morning after not being able to restrain myself for another minute. I made it through Saturday, but that's because we went to the museum and out to dinner with another couple, so I didn't have to spend much time alone with her. That night we were both exhausted from the day, so she didn't attempt any sort of closeness. The next morning while we were in the kitchen and she was busy making coffee, I just felt this urge to confront her. I was probably not in the best mood. I was cranky and filled with anger, but I decided to go for it anyway. I asked her if she knew a certain person, let's call him her AP, and when I mentioned his name, I saw surprise wash over her face as she turned to look at me. She first said no, but then said yes. He was a science teacher at the junior high. I had my tablet in front of me and said, I just read where he passed away from the big C she said, that's terrible. He was so young. She continued on saying she didn't know him well, but knew he had a wife and a son. I let it go for a while and watched her after she sat down and served me coffee. She was on edge and nervous and started looking at her smartphone. I let a few minutes go by and then asked her if she ever had done any work with this guy. She looked at me in frustration and said no, then asked why I was asking her about him. I said, are you sure about that? And she said yes, she was sure, and acted like I was crazy for asking. By this time I was tired of dancing around the subject, so I came right out and told her I knew otherwise. I told her I had proof that she and this guy had a three-year affair, and she needed to tell me everything right now. She asked me what I was talking about, and I told her she knew exactly what I was talking about and to stop playing dumb with this. She started crying and asked me how I knew. I said that wasn't important, but I told her I had all their love messages. She then tried gaslighting me and saying those messages were just them role-playing a fantasy, and that they never took things any further. And I see this as a prime example of trickle true thing because she's only giving him information that she thinks he knows. So at first she says, oh, I don't know the guy. Oh, yeah, I do know him. He was a teacher in the junior high. All those messages that you saw, that we were just role playing. It was just fantasy role playing. We didn't engage in anything because she believed that all he had were the messages. But then something changed. I interrupted her and asked her to say it again. And once more, she insisted that there was no physical involvement. That's when I showed her the video of them together and pressed play. Her reaction was immediate. She went from denying everything to apologizing and acknowledging that it happened years ago, claiming she's changed since then. After that, I got up from my seat and walked out to the patio when she followed behind me. She was crying and begging me to talk to her, but I told her I wanted to be alone. She then started crying loudly and raising her voice, saying, seen in our neighborhood. By this time, I was really getting angry and went into the bedroom and started packing. She tried pulling me away and hugging me to prevent me from doing so. I told her if she didn't let me go, I would send the video to her parents. After hearing this, she quickly released me and laid on the bed, crying and saying she was so sorry. I finished packing and headed out the door. She asked where I was going and I told her I'd be staying in a hotel for a while. I left her crying there and drove away. I drove over here to the same coffee shop I'm sitting at today, which is just down the road from my office. I then made a reservation at the hotel across the street and spent the rest of the morning here as I thought about what to do next. My wife kept calling and texting persistently, but I didn't respond until I arrived at the hotel around 3 p.m. That's when I finally answered one of her calls and we ended up talking for almost two hours. I informed her that I was planning to divorce her and advised her to prepare for it. She spent the rest of the time pleading with me and trying to change my mind. During the conversation, I asked her to explain her relationship with her AP. She told me they both shared a particular disgusting fetish, nothing more. Well, what was that fetish? Tell us what it was. You keep making all these comments about it, but you don't say what they were doing. She said their physical acts meant nothing emotionally, and then tried proving this to me by body shaming the guy she told me you can see from the video how unattractive and emaciated he was she said that obviously I could see that she would never leave me for him and that their meetups were just to satisfy the fetish they both had which she claims to no longer have I responded by telling her she has serious mental problems and should see a doctor about it I probably shouldn't have said that as she immediately latched onto that statement and admitted she probably was insane for doing what she did. She then transitioned to telling me it all happened over four years ago 
and that she's never once even thought about being with anyone else since. I countered and told her the only reason she ended the affair is that her ape moved five hours away to take a position in another school district. She then tried telling me she ended the affair way before that, but I told her she was lying because the video was recorded the day before he and his family left town. She didn't have a response to that, and right there I knew my wife was not only a cheater, but a habitual liar. On Monday of this past week, I met with my attorney to let her know what transpired over the weekend and to advise her. I wanted to expedite the divorce process. She said she would make it happen. The attorney suggested that I stop communicating directly with my wife and have all future communication go through her instead. She cautioned me that confronting my wife without any witnesses was very risky and strongly advised against doing it again. She shared stories of multiple cases where husbands were falsely accused in similar situations. Although I didn't like her advice, I agreed to follow this approach moving forward. So that's where things stand right now. Everything has happened so fast. I haven't had a chance to mourn the loss of my marriage, and I don't feel too bad right now but I know it will eventually hit me and that's the end of his second update, and now he comes back with a third update 10 days later. He says after I gave my attorney the approval to expedite the divorce I told my family, and they were shocked and disappointed in my wife. Their main concern was that I was all right and taking care of myself. I assured them I was but even so they made arrangements to travel down to spend a few days with me. The following week, the next day I got a call from my mother-in-law. She apologized to me for her daughter's behavior and asked if there was any chance I'd reconsider or at least think things through before divorcing her. I told her I already had, and now all I want is an amicable divorce so that we both can move on with our lives. She said she understood my position, and we ended the call on good terms. The following week, my parents arrived in town on Thursday and got a room at the hotel where I was staying. I took Thursday and Friday off to spend time with them and we had a good time sightseeing during the day and going out to dinner at night. On Saturday morning, my mom said that my mother-in-law called her last night and she and my father-in-law wanted to meet my mom and dad for lunch. I didn't have a problem with this as our parents had become friendly since we got married. They're not super close, but they are friendly and stay in touch on a regular basis. I agreed to their suggestion and they arranged to meet at a nearby restaurant. Meanwhile, my mom called and mentioned that my in-laws wanted to meet me. I suggested they come over to the hotel and we could have a chat on the back deck by the pool. When they arrived, it was good to see them. They weren't insistent or pushy. Instead, they were genuinely sorry and worried about how I was doing. We had a nice visit and they really didn't try convincing me to stay with their daughter until the very end of our meeting. It was then when my mother-in-law asked if there was any way I could forgive her and stay married and I told her unfortunate. Lately, there wasn't. She said, okay, I'll drop it, but said she had to at least try. I told her I understood. We all hugged, said our goodbyes, and they left. That was it. I now just have to wait for the hearing to be scheduled so I can get this all over with and move on with my life. And that's the end of his third update. And now he comes back with a final update so we can see how everything turned out. And this final update came one full year later, July of 2023. He said, I thought since our state had no fault divorce laws, the process would go quickly. But it didn't. I had to wait almost nine months for the hearing. I also thought no fault divorce laws mean both parties just split things equally and walk away. But I was wrong. It's pretty frustrating. Even though I covered 70% of the bills and brought in 85% of the assets, I ended up having to pay alimony. Instead of that, my attorney managed to negotiate an extra lump sum of $29,000 to be paid to my ex-wife after we sold our house. Doesn't seem fair at all, does it? Because honestly, it isn't fair at all. But you should have done your homework before you jumped into marriage. My attorney said that I could have claimed the assets I owned prior to marriage. However, I made the mistake of adding my wife as a joint owner on the accounts right after we got married. So they too were split $5,050. So what he's saying there is the assets he brought into the marriage. If he would have left them in his name and maybe just added his wife as a beneficiary he would have been able to keep whatever assets he brought into the marriage. But what this guy did was he put his wife on the accounts as a joint owner, and therefore the accounts get split 5,050. That's all water under the bridge now, he says, and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just glad it's all over, and I'm a free man now for my ex-wife. She and I remained on civil terms throughout the process, although she constantly kept asking me for a second chance right up to the divorce and has continued to do so for weeks after she says she's infatuated with me and will never give up trying. She's not been a past, but every couple of weeks she sends me a text reminding me she's still thinking about me and if I ever change my mind, she'll always be available. 
The craziest thing she did was last week she texted me and asked if I'd be willing to have a child with her. I told her, no, we're divorced. She then asked if I would be a donor so that she could have my child that way. This lady is nuts. I told her, no, that's not going to happen. And that if she wants a child, she should pursue another relationship or look for a donor. She said she doesn't want another man. And if I will not father her child, she will not have children. That text exchange really bothered me, and I hope she's realized the gravity of the situation. While I still care about her, I'm considering ending our communication. Yes, why am I still keeping up regular contact with her after the divorce? I shouldn't be at all. The next time she texts me, I'll have to let her know firmly but kindly that it's time to stop our communication. In the meantime, I'm going to call her parents and let them know what she's been up to. So hopefully they can intervene and put an end to it in a subtle way. See, this guy is still a really nice guy. Well, that's all folks. I've lost half my net worth, but at least I'm a free man and that's the end of his story. Overall, I think he handled things pretty well when he found out she was cheating. Now he is making a mistake now because he keeps communicating with her and he needs to cut that off. Now the scary thing about this story though is she left no red flags. She gave him no red flags. He had no inkling anything was going on and you know what. She would have gotten away with it if her AP did not make that final confession to his wife he was probably being eaten alive with guilt and before he left this world. He wanted to get that off his chest so he told his wife and if he didn't do that this woman would have gotten away with cheating and her husband may have never found out I wonder how many men are out there right now where their girlfriends or their fiancés or their wives have cheated on them and they don't know anything about it. It's a scary thought. Now, let's take a look at what I think are the morals of this story. First, never convey a sense of absolute trust with any partner. I said that up front. This guy said he trusted his wife with his life. You should be able to do that. But again, like I said, in today's modern society, I don't think you can. Next, before getting married, check the divorce laws in your state. Here's another situation where the guy knew nothing about the ramifications of what happens if you get a divorce. He lived in a no-fault state, so that means either party can walk away at any time. And guess what? You split your assets, and if you're the key bread earner, you're going to be paying alimony. Next, take steps to safeguard your finances. Next, some women are experts at deception. What I just said with the ability to engage in extramarital affairs while maintaining a normal family life. This woman did that brilliantly. And like I said, she would have gotten away with it if her AP didn't confess. Next, always have witnesses when confronting a cheater. This attorney told him that she said that she's had multiple husbands where their wives have falsely accused them of things when they didn't have witnesses. So you always need to have a witness when you're confronting a cheater because when someone like that is backed into a corner, you don't know what they're going to do. And then, finally, no contact is always the best approach. This guy needs to cease contact with his ex-wife and move on with his life. So those are my thoughts. And now I want to hear from you. What did you think of this story? Do you think he handled things well? Would you have done something different? 